These creatures have arrived on Earth because of an experiment trying to open the door to a parallel universe which went horribly wrong. A man named David Drayton is painting a movie poster when the power of his house goes out. David leaves his work to go downstairs to his family and they notice a storm brewing. They go to sleep in the basement. The freak storm causes a tree to go through David's window and destroy his poster. The next morning, David wakes up to find utter destruction in his yard and the outside of his house. The power has also gone out. He and his family notice a strange mist making its way from the mountains toward the town. David finds that his boathouse has been destroyed by his neighbor Norton's tree that fell during the storm. David is grumpy about it since he's had disputes with Norton before too. David goes to see Norton and asks for his insurance information to settle the damage. Norton isn't happy about it, but he agrees. Norton's car has also been destroyed by a fallen tree, so he asks David if he can hitch a ride to the market with him. David, Norton, and David's son, Billy, drive toward the market. On the way there, they notice lots of military vehicles going in the opposite direction towards the mountains. David and Norton discuss that there is a military base in the mountains, and no one knows what it's for. The stories range from defense research to crashed alien ships. They arrive at the market and find out that there is no power there either, and that the phone signals and landlines are both down. There are a lot of people at the market since everyone is trying to stockpile because of the storm. As David, Billy, and Norton are waiting in line at a store, three army personnel arrive. They are about to get on a bus to go on a leave. Soon after that, another army officer arrives and tells them they are wanted at the base and that their leaves have been canceled. David is noticing all this. Next, a bunch of police cars and firefighters are seen going down the road with their sirens blasting, and everyone in the store gets worried. Then, a loud distress siren is heard all over the town, and a man named Dan comes running towards the store with his nose bleeding. He is screaming that his friend got attacked and killed by something in the mist. Everyone panics as they notice that the mist is slowly enveloping the entire town. One man decides to run towards his car, but as he reaches the car, the mist envelops him and his screams are heard. The people in the store start panicking and suddenly a massive thud is heard, as if that of a giant foot in the whole store shakes violently. People assume it's an earthquake. Everyone theorizes what's in the mist. Some say it's a poisonous gas cloud from a chemical accident at the factory. Others assume something worse and one woman named Carmody says that it's the end of days. Everyone rolls their eyes at Carmody. They all agree to not go outside until they figure it out. One woman says she has to go home to her kids who are alone and asks if someone will help her, but no one steps up, and she walks out on her own into the mist. Billy is in shock, and David is taking care of him. He is helped by Irene, Hattie, Amanda, and store clerks Ollie and Sally. Norton is a respected man in town, so he is telling everyone to stay calm, and people are listening to him. Carmody is still trying to preach to everyone that the mist is a sign of the coming of Armageddon, and not many people are paying attention. David goes into the back of the store to look for blankets for Billy when something slams strongly against the back door, and David rushes back inside. He tells Ollie and two workers, Myron and Jim, about it. They go to the back of the store to check it out, but they don't really believe David. The store generator is not working, so a younger store clerk says he'll go and fix it from the outside. David warns them against it, but no one listens to him. They open the back door and giant tentacles emerge from the mist and grab the young store clerk, tearing his flesh. David grabs the boy and Ollie tries to swing an axe at the tentacles. Myron and Jim stand in shock. Eventually, the tentacles manage to drag the young store clerk outside. David tells Ollie to close the door, and as the door is closing, David grabs the axe and chops off a piece of the tentacles. They all come back inside and debate how to reveal all this to the rest of the people in the store. They agree to tell it to Norton first since he is a respected man and people will listen to him, but Norton does not believe them and thinks it's an elaborate effort to humiliate him. He thinks David is doing this on purpose because they've had fights before. All the people in the store gather and David tells them what he saw. They don't believe him either, but he takes them to the back and shows them the piece of the tentacle he cut off. Now everyone believes him. They all start fortifying the store by placing bags of products against the windows. Meanwhile, Carmody is supposedly speaking to God in the bathroom, talking about wanting to save these people from his wrath. She comes outside and starts preaching to everyone about how this is Judgment Day. She says that it is the result of all the people sinning, 
and the only way to avoid this is by offering expiation or a sacrifice in blood. She says that the young store clerk was the first sacrifice and that more sinners will need to die to save the believers. Amanda gets tired of her and slaps her in the face. Carmody predicts that another person will die tonight and everyone tells her to shut up. David and the store people look for weapons. They make torches out of mops and charcoal oil, grab knives, and Amanda has a gun which she gives to Ollie, a state shooting champion. Norton and a group of people who still don't believe David decide to go out into the mist. David asks Norton if he will tie a rope around his waist so that they'll know how far he made it. Norton doesn't agree, but another man in the store does. He ties the rope around his waist, and they all step out into the mist. For a while, it seems the man is going well, but suddenly, something tugs on the rope really hard and pulls it into the air. David and the store people struggle to hold on to it. They pull on the rope, and it comes back covered in blood. They find that they are dragging only the lower half of the man's body. Everybody screams at the sight. Carmody continues her preaching. At night, some people sleep while others are on guard duty. Giant bugs start appearing and sitting on the store glass. David and the store people turn on flashlights to get a better look. The bugs are followed by even bigger bird-like creatures. They start crashing into the window and breaking it. Ollie figures out that the bugs are attracted to the light and tells everyone to turn them off, but it's too late, as the birds-like creatures are already attacking the window. The window breaks and the bugs and bird-like creatures get inside. One of the bugs stings Sally in the neck. Her neck swells up and she dies. David manages to burn one of the birds using a torch. One guy tries to light his own torch but slips and accidentally lights himself up on fire. A bug lands on Carmody and she stays calm, reciting the Bible and the bug flies away. Ollie shoots one of the birds right as it's about to attack Billy. They cover up the hole in the window to prevent any more creatures from coming in. Now some people start siding with Carmody because she predicted that a person will die at night and Sally is dead. David goes to see the guy that burned himself and he is in pretty bad shape. David discusses with Ollie, Dan, and Amanda that they have to try to go to the pharmacy next door and get him some medicine. He also says they have to get out of this store altogether. He suggests that they grab his truck which has room for eight people and drive it out of the mist. The others ask him why he wants to leave and he says the main reason is Carmody. He says she is starting to gather followers and the more scared people get, the more they'll listen to her and then she is going to start sacrificing those who are not on her side. Amanda does not agree with this theory because she thinks people will be rational, but Ollie and Dan support David. As David and the group are about to leave for the pharmacy, Carmody tries to stop them and she has a lot of followers now, but they still manage to go against her decision. Their group is joined by one of the army personnel named Jessup, Irene, Jim, and a few other people. As they arrive at the pharmacy and start collecting medicines, they notice that the place is covered in spider webs. They start noticing that there are dead bodies trapped in the webs. One of the bodies is of the officer that came earlier to take the three army personnel with him. He says he is sorry and that all of this is their fault. His body is disfigured and something is moving inside it. Just then, spider-like creatures start appearing from every direction and the group has to fight them off. The army man's body explodes and thousands of little spiders come out of it. The spider-like creatures shoot webs at them and the webs burn and cut through whatever body part they touch. One of the group members is caught by the spiders and killed, while another is killed by the web burning through his thigh. The remaining members manage to fight their way out of the pharmacy and run back to the store. They are all in bad shape, but Jim is particularly shocked. Next. David wakes up after being passed out from shock all day. He finds out that almost the entire store is now listening to Carmody's sermon. Jim has also joined her group. Irene, Dan, Amanda, Ollie, and a few others want to join David in getting out of the store and using his car to escape. David says that he wants to know more about the mist first, and he thinks the army personnel might know because the officer back at the pharmacy said it's their fault. David and the group approach Jessup, but his other two friends aren't with him. They go to the back of the store and find that the other two have committed suicide. David asks Jessup whether the mist is some kind of military experiment gone wrong, and Jessup is about to answer, but Jim arrives and drags him to Carmody and her mob. Carmody forces Jessup to tell them what is going on. 
He reveals that he was just stationed at the base, but he heard rumors that there were experiments being conducted to open portals to peek into alternate universes, and something went wrong because of which this mist and these creatures came to Earth. Carmody gives a big sermon about scientists defying God and blames Jessup, who keeps saying that he was just stationed at the base and it's not his fault. The mob gets riled up and one man stabs Jessup. They throw him out into the mist where one of the giant creatures grabs him and takes him away. Next, David wakes up and he and his group prepare to leave the store. As they are about to leave, they are stopped and surrounded by Carmody and her mob. Carmody says she won't allow them to leave. She says they are sinners and all of this is happening because of them. She tells the mob that they must sacrifice the sinners to stop all of this from happening. She tells the mob to grab Billy and Amanda. The mob moves towards them bearing knives and David and his group grab whatever weapon they can. Total chaos ensues as they fight and Carmody screams, but suddenly a gunshot is heard and it is revealed that Ollie has shot Carmody. He shoots her a second time in the head and the mob disperses. David and his group get out into the mist and make for David's truck, but they are attacked by the spider-like creatures and the giant creatures. Ollie and several of the others are killed, and in the end, only David, Billy, Amanda, Irene, and Dan make it to the car. David notices Ollie's gun lying on the hood of his car. He reaches out and grabs it just before a spider reaches him. They start driving and reach David's house where he sees his wife's body caught up in the spider web just like the officer at the pharmacy. He is distraught. They decide to try their luck and see how far the fuel in the truck takes them. They drive for hours and hours hoping to get clear of the mist. Finally, the truck runs out of fuel but they still haven't managed to get away from the mist. They realize they are trapped and out of options. David pulls out Ollie's gun and they all understand what he is thinking and agree to it. David checks and finds there are only four bullets in the gun, however there are five people in the car. Four shots are heard from the car. David is the only one left alive and he is completely distraught at what he has had to do. He gets out of the car and screams at the creatures to come and get him. Just then he sees military convoys arriving. They are setting fire to all the webs and creatures and taking the situation under control. They are also carrying survivors, and among the survivors is the woman who left the store at the very start. The mist begins to dissipate. David realizes that Amanda, Irene, Dan, and Billy died for nothing, and if they had waited a while, they would have been rescued. He screams and cries. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.